Professor Lakshman Nandagiri serves as a professor in the Department of Applied Mechanics and Hydraulics at National Institute of Technology, Karnataka, Suratkal. He has completed his B.E. in Civil Engineering at SJCE Mysore and M.E. in Hydraulics at NIE Mysore and Ph.D. in Water Resource and Engineering. His technical areas of specialization include Hydraulics, Fluid Mechanics, Water Resource Engineering, Surface Water Hydrology, Subsurface Hydrology, Irrigation and Drainage Engineering, Water Resource Management. He has over 24 years of experience and is a very good resource person and an excellent speaker. On this note, I would like to call upon Professor Lakshman Nandagiri to deliver the validity address. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely honored to be present here to deliver the valedictory address in the 30th series of the seminar and exhibition of student project program being organized by the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology and being hosted by the Sahyadri College of Engineering and Management. The 32nd series of this program was organized at NITK Suratkal and I was a part of the organizing committee at that time. And I am very happy to note that this event has gained in popularity and grown in size. From the statistics given by Dr. Swami, I can very easily see that this program is scaling higher heights every year. And it is only apt that this kind of a program should become popular among the student community. Because one thing that the student community and the future generation have to deal with, which our generation has dealt with in a smaller scale, but you people have to deal with in a much larger scale, is the issue of change. People make these quotations and say that change is inevitable, and if at all there is anything constant, it is only change. And I think the human race has recognized this. And as Charles Darwin very nicely said, it is not the strongest species, nor is it the most intelligent species which will survive. But survival is guaranteed for that species which is most adaptable to change. And the human race has exhibited this wonderful quality of being able to adapt to change. Even in the Indian context, I think change has always been there and Indians as a society and as a race have handled change and been innovators in their own way. But unfortunately in the Indian context, innovation has been mostly at the grassroots level and innovation has been focused more on solving local problems rather than looking at innovation in the modern sense. In the modern sense, innovation necessarily involves converting a discovery or an invention into a commercial venture or a commercial product. Unfortunately, we Indians have never looked at innovation in that sense. I'm sure all of you realize that there is one typical Indian word that many of us use, although it is a word in Hindi, I think it is used across the country, and that word is called Jugad. You might have heard of this word called Jugad, and today, the international community, and I think very soon the Webster's Dictionary will also include Jugad as a word in their vocabulary. It has already been introduced as a word. And this Jugad basically refers to the innovative skill of Indians at the grassroots level. However, it is not sufficient for economic growth to have small scale innovations taking place. What the country needs are innovations that can be scaled up and commercially made viable as products and services. And therefore, Indians have to struggle much harder to achieve this kind of success. Now, I think for the student community, innovation needs to come as part and parcel of their technical education program. Unfortunately, education in India the technical education programs that are offered in most universities are so watertight and so constrained 
that there is very little scope for students to inculcate skills which are necessary for innovation. One of the things that we need to remember that there is an entire life cycle of innovation. Now what I mean by that is you have an exhibition like this, you identify certain projects, some of these projects have been filtered and uh, evaluated and they have reached this stage. Obviously they are extremely good, that is why they have reached a stage where they are being exhibited in a program like this and then probably there is going to be a further evaluation of these projects and some projects are going to be classified as the best projects. Unfortunately, we cannot stop at that. There is an entire life cycle of innovation which needs to be taken up where these ideas and these concepts have to be utilized and converted into commercial products. And that is where we Indians are lagging behind. We do not have mechanisms where such ideas can be taken by the industry and converted into products that can be delivered for the benefit of mankind. Now, part of this happens because, as I said earlier, our education system does not promote the spirit of inquiry, the spirit of questioning. In fact, I always say this in my own class, students rarely ask questions in the class. More Indian students never ask questions in the class. Do you know why? Because right from kindergarten, what the teacher tells you is that you should keep quiet in the class. Don't talk, don't open your mouth, keep quiet. This is what we hear right from kindergarten. So it's extremely difficult for such students who have gone through such a schooling to end up in an engineering institution and suddenly start asking questions in the class. So I really don't know how many of you ask questions in the class. If you're not asking questions in the class, I think that is where the first step of failure has happened in the path for innovation, in the path for inventions, and in the path of discovery. So my request to all of you, please have this spirit of inquiry. It is always good to ask a question. There is nothing like a silly question. All questions are valid and you must inculcate this habit of asking questions. In fact, there have been studies which have shown that there are certain critical skills which need to be developed for good innovators. Innovators need to have these skills and since I am also currently the professor in charge of training at placement at NITK Suratkal, I know what companies are looking for from the students. They are looking for a certain set of skills and they are prepared to offer 25 lakhs per annum for those set of skills because the companies know that these bright young minds which have these particular set of skills, even though they pay them 25 lakhs per annum, they are sure that they are going to get much more in return for their own companies and they are able to churn out more profits. So what are these critical skills that young people like you must possess once you obtain a degree in engineering? The first and most important one is that of creativity. And by creativity, I mean you must be able to come up with new ideas and new solutions, which I'm sure all of you in this hall who are sitting here now have already acquired that skill. You must also have an ability to present ideas to an audience. You, ha you may have a wonderful idea in your mind, but unless you are able to convey that idea in the most appropriate manner to an audience and to the person sitting opposite you, your idea is never going to be successful, it is never going to be recognized. You must possess an alertness to opportunities. You must recognize opportunities when they come up and you must grab those opportunities for your benefit. Analytical thinking is ab absolutely essential. An ability to coordinate activities, become leaders, work in a team, these are skills that you must possess. And also an ability to acquire new knowledge. These are the skills that are necessary for innovation to happen and these are the skills that are necessary for companies to be offering you jobs. Unfortunately, the technical education system in our country promotes and develops only a few of these skills. Our technical education probably promotes analytical thinking and also an ability to acquire new knowledge. Our technical education programs don't promote creativity, they don't promote the spirit of inquiry, they don't promote the concept of communication, they don't promote the concept of grabbing opportunities and becoming innovators. And therefore, technical education across the world today is undergoing a lot of change. New concepts of teaching and learning are being implemented. 
I'm sure some of you in the audience will know of a new concept of teaching and learning, which is known as a flipped class. You know what a flipped class is? Conventionally, what happens in the classroom is that the teacher comes and delivers a lecture, and the students listen to the lecture, and at the end of the lecture, an assignment is given to the student, and the student goes back to his or her room and solves the assignment and comes back to the class and submits the assignment. The concept of a flipped class is exactly the opposite. The lecture is recorded, it is available in soft copy form, it is given to the student, and the student can watch that lecture on his or her laptop anywhere, sitting under a tree, sitting in his room, or sitting in a classroom, anywhere. You listen to that lecture over and over again, pause it, play back, fast forward, whatever you want to do, you do with that lecture. This is, happens outside the classroom. And when you come to the classroom, the teacher gives you the assignment and you have to solve the assignment in the class under the guidance of the teacher. And this concept of a flipped class is promoting the spirit of inquiry and the spirit of innovation. Another new technique of learning that is happening today is design thinking. Another way of learning today is known as the project-based learning. I'll just take a minute to explain project-based learning which I implemented and I continue to implement in my own class. I was really surprised when I implemented this project-based learning for the first time. I was taking a course in fluid mechanics and I had taught the students how to design a pipeline to deliver water from one location to another location, how to design the diameter, how to calculate the losses and all that. So the entire lecture was given by me and then I gave them a project and I randomly created four groups out of the 40 students who are present in the class, 10 students each, four groups, and I posed this problem to them. I said, we are right now in the civil engineering department building where I am taking this class. Imagine there is a sump behind this building and there is a fifth block hostel for the boys. You are now required to design the pipeline to deliver water from the sump which is in this building to the hostel block which is located maybe half a kilometer away. This was the problem that I gave them. And I said, I am not giving you any more data. Whatever else you want, you have to assume. You make your assumptions. And you have to submit your project report with the technical report, with all the details, and also the cost analysis. How much is it going to cost? And that report has to be submitted. And once you make the submission, each group will have to present that in front of the classmates and defend what they have done. This was the exercise that I gave them and I gave them 15 days time to submit their reports. And I was totally shocked with what happened. You know, we as teachers usually form impressions about students. We think, okay, that student is very good because he looks attentive. That student is very good because he did a test very well. So we form, and that student is not so good, he doesn't come to my class. You know, teachers form this impression about students. And I was in for a surprise. The project reports that they submitted contained complete technical details and also complete cost estimates. One of the contractors who does a job in our campus, he came to me and asked me, sir, many of your students came to me. I said, why did they come to you? Sir, they came to me, they wanted to know how much it costs to dig a one meter deep trench for one meter, what is the cost? What is the cost of a female laborer? What is the cost of a male laborer? They came and asked for these details. They have gone into Mangalore city to every hardware shop. They have found out the cost of PVC pipe. They have found out the cost of cast iron pipe. They have gone and found out the cost of a pump, how the capacity of a pump is decided, what is the cost of the pump. And they came out with different layouts, designs. One group said, we'll take the pipeline through the main lawn of the institute. Another group said we will take it along the road. Another group came out with a very innovative idea. They said we'll put the pipeline over the compound wall of the institute so that we don't disturb anything. There is no trenching to be done. And the presentations were made in the class. And you may not believe it, the leader of that group turned out to be the student whom I thought was the weakest in the class. He was the one who was standing there confidently, boldly presenting the whole work. And there were questions being asked by the other groups. They were having a healthy debate about this whole exercise. And this 
is known as project based learning and let me tell you that batch of students may forget anything that they learned in their four years of btech program at nitk suratkal but i am sure they will not forget what is meant by pipeline design i am absolutely certain about that because they did something which interested them they did something that was truly innovative so i sincerely believe that if at all innovation in this country has to bear fruit and really go beyond only exhibitions and really come out with products that are going to help mankind and improve the economic growth of this country i think there must be a paradigm change in the education system we need to inculcate new skills till today education especially technical education in this country has been focused on disciplinary centric approach where you have civil engineering discipline electrical engineering discipline and so on i think we have to give that up and migrate towards a new paradigm of technical education which will be skill based or skill centric education and it is only then that young people and their creativity and their potential can truly be converted into economic growth for this country with those few words i really would like to express my thanks to the organizers of this program in particular kscst and dr swami and this esteemed institution sahyadri college of engineering and management and mr bandari for having given me an opportunity to share some of my thoughts with you thank you very much wish you all the best thank you sir for your thought provoking address we acknowledge the presence of sir nagbhushan engineer and ie member kolkata in the audience so i request you to we rarely get this kind of opportunity to listen to the words of the great knowledgeable speaker yes i am talking about our chief guest dr lv murli krishna reddy president institution of engineers india kolkata dr lv murli krishna reddy is the youngest president of india's oldest professional body of engineers the institution of engineers india he is a technologist and a researcher with focus on promoting interdisciplinary research to deliver solutions services and project products for societal needs his professional experience spans over 24 years he holds a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering a master's degree in energy systems and a phd in energy conservation and management his areas of expertise and current interest include chemical engineering energy systems collaborative research institution building micro air vehicles skill development sustainability platforms and technologies for societal needs he has been associated with iei ksc as secretary and chairman of karnataka state center and has served in several committees of iei i am honored to invite dr lv murli krishna reddy to address the gathering it is really a privilege to me to be here and uh, share some of my thoughts first i, I commend the uh, bandari foundation at bangalore for their uh, vision to establish this uh, institution particularly research focused the management has shown their dedication and vision uh, by putting together a team of committed researchers and education management professionals Uh, Karnataka State Council I also congratulate Karnataka State Center for Pro Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology for performing performing human service to promote science technology innovation through its myriad programs the student project program is one of the important programs and facilitates students to develop their knowledge and expertise in the chosen engineering discipline demonstrate their capacity to integrate concepts and develop products and solutions that can taken forward with the development to address societal changes we live uh, in a world shaped by engineering over the years we have seen the pace of technological changes and accelerated and it would not be out of place to anticipate that engineering and technological advances will play a major role in nation building in the indian context it is likely that many of the social grand challenges like better medicines and medical devices for universal health care access to clean water reverse engineering the brain making solar energy economical and affordable among others will be met by the engineering breakthroughs taking place at the interactions of engineering disciplines new interdisciplinary fields 
are emerging like bioengineering, tissue engineering, safety and reliability engineering, railway engineering, among others, along with the best practices like interdisciplinary engineering and system engineering, are reshaping how engineering community views the world, defines and solves problems. Innovation is the precursor to competitiveness and growth. It is also believed that the nation's ranking in innovation is linked to the investment in research and development. The Indian engineering ecosystem should focus on building an alignment of engineering with R&D as per the international requirements. As a president of the Institution of Engineers, I would like to submit certain things what we are doing. The IEA was established in 1920, incorporated by the Royal Charter in 1935. With this Royal, Ra Royal Charter incorporation, IEA got a lot of powers to regulate and uh, control engineering education in the country, including the engineering profession. Has grown over the years as a multidisciplinary professional body for engineers with over 8 lakh members at currently across the world.